Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net where I teach beginners the skills that they need to get their first software development job building Windows and web apps at the world's best companies as quickly as possible. In this lesson, we're going to focus on iteration statements. Uh, we're actually going to focus on a single iteration statement called a for loop. Uh, sometimes you're going to need to loop through or iterate through a sequence of items and perform a series of checks uh, until you find a successful match. Actually, you're going to do this a lot more than you might anticipate. So while it might not seem all that useful at first, trust me, you're going to need this in your toolbox. So what I want to do is start up with a new project. We're going to call this four iterations. So using one of the techniques that we saw earlier, we want to make sure that uh, we create a new project. The new project dialog pops up. We're going to make sure that we're in the C Sharp uh, templates, choosing the console application template, and we want to call this four iterations. And click OK. OK, so the syntax itself that we're going to write here in just a moment is probably the most cryptic of anything that you've seen yet. If I had to admit it, sometimes I get things a little bit mixed up uh, myself. So later, after we've struggled through writing this all by hand, I'm going to share with you the little secret that I use to cheat my way uh, into writing it correctly every single time. So having warned you about the complexity of this syntax, I'm still betting that you could figure it out and read it even before you know, we run the application and I take the time to explain what each little bit is doing. So let me do this. I'm going to be quiet, I'm going to write the code, and then we'll come back and delve into it a little bit more. Uh, so let's get started with this. Alrighty, what do you think that this does? Well, first of all, I'm betting that the most difficult part was the little pieces here at the very top in line number 13. So let's break them up. First of all, if we were to write these as three different statements, they might make a little bit more sense. So the first one, clearly, uh, we're creating a variable called i, and we're initializing that uh, variable to the value 0. And then Next, we're going to, in this middle part, we're going to evaluate and ask, is it true that i is less than 10? All right, so we'll come back at that in just a moment. Finally, there's this strange operator that's next to the letter i, and uh, we didn't talk about that in an earlier lesson. That's actually the increment operator. So it's basically the equivalent of writing i equals i plus 1 you're just basically incrementing uh, the value of i by one every time that that statement is executed. All right, So we're, we're instructing C-sharp to execute this block of code beneath the for statement uh, until the condition i less than 10 is no longer true. So each time you finish iterating through the block of code, increment i by one, and try it again, and then try it again, and then try it again. And when i is no longer less than 10, when that's no longer true, then don't execute this block of code. Instead, skip it and move on to the next line, which in this case is just our console.read line. So let's see what happens whenever we run this application. We get a uh, progression of numbers from 0 to 9, and then we hit our console.read line. We'll hit the enter key in our keyboard to end, to end it. So we get a listing of 0 through 9. Uh, we keep iterating through that block of code until i is no longer less than 10. And then we continue on to the console read line. Great. OK, so let's uh, create a slightly more advanced version of this. Let's comment out this line of code right here. And I want to add the following lines of code.
Okay, so what did I do here? Well, I simply added a very, very simple if statement. What do you suppose it's going to do when I run it this time? Well, we're inserting the if statement to circumvent the natural flow of the code. Not only will we print a message to screen once i is equal to 7, but we're also going to use the break statement below it in line number 20 uh, to break out of code. So i equals 8, i equals 9, i equals 10 will not be evaluated. We will break out of that, uh, that for statement completely. So what I want to do, let's go ahead and run it real quick and you'll see that it works. And it's not very exciting because all we see is the message found 7. To really see this at work, what we need to do is set a breakpoint and then watch how the code is actually executing uh, behind the scenes. Uh, so we're going to witness the flow of code as it executes and we're also going to exercise some of the debugging skills that we learned earlier in this series uh, as well as the lessons specifically about debugging that you may have watched about Visual Studio. So what I want to do is set a breakpoint on if i is equal to 7 and then I want to start debugging. And so when the execution of code reaches line 17, the execution will halt and it will allow us to take control and to inspect values. So here's what I want to do is hover my mouse cursor over I. And you can see here that the little, uh, and this is the first time that we've reached this breakpoint. So the value of I is zero. So I want to kind of slowly hover my mouse cursor over that little window and I want to get to that little thumbtack and I'm going to tack it down and when I do notice that it puts a little um, a little window off to the right hand side and now I can uh, see that window each time I step through my code so I'm going to go ahead and step over and then come back through and now you can see that I equals one and now watch this time when I go through it uh, I'm going to execute that line of code Notice what happens. Um, well, hold on. I, I made a mistake. There we go. Okay. Notice that whenever we hit this iteration, I uh, plus plus, that I uh, incremented from two to three. And now notice that the little window, the I and the three are in red. So uh, visually, you can see what just changed in the previous line of code, what variable values changed with that little cue that uh, the value turned red, not only here in this little window, but then also in the locals window as well. You can see I turned to three, and now uh, it is red, and when we execute one more line of code, it's no longer red, it's just black because the previous line of code did not change anything else, all right? So what I wanna do is just hit the continue button until I see that I equals seven on my breakpoint, all right? So four, five, six, and then one more time, that'll put it at seven. And now I wanna take control of the debugging experience again. So I use the continue button to go ahead and do all of the increments, the checks, and so on, uh, until I got to the point where I wanted to stop and take control and watch as I step into the if statement print found seven to screen and then hit break. Now this is the important part. Let's watch what happens whenever we hit the break statement. Notice it jumps out immediately from break to console.read line. You might say, well, what's the significance of that? Well, it didn't touch these other lines of code that are merely uh, the ending uh, curly braces, but that just shows you how, how it will jump outside of the, of the iteration statement to the next line of code after the iteration statement. All right, so I'm just gonna hit the continue uh, one more time now, and we see the, the console window found seven, uh, and we'll just go ahead and hit the enter key on the keyboard to, um, uh, to finish out that uh, execution. All right, so admittedly, this is a nonsensical example because it really doesn't do anything meaningful, right? It's just a pithy example to demonstrate how to use uh, uh, the the use of and the flow of the for statement and how to interrupt the flow by adding a conditional statement and the break keyword. Great. Okay, now I promised you a little cheat at the very beginning of the lesson. So instead of having to memorize this syntax for int i equals zero or whatever the number is, 
uh, I less than 10, I plus plus, and so on, um, you can use this little feature of Visual Studio called Code Snippets. Uh, we're going to use Code Snippets throughout this entire series to save keystrokes and to write code more accurately. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is go below all of this here. And I'm going to um, just type in the, the word for, and then I'm going to hit tab twice on my keyboard. So the tab key twice. And notice that Visual Studio automatically inserts this entire structure for the for iteration statement. And also notice that it puts my mouse cursor and highlights the letter I. So what I can do now is replace the variable I with a variable name I want to use. So I'm going to type in my value. All right. And everywhere, now when I use the tab key one more time, everywhere the letter I was, it replaced it with the new variable name, my value. And then it goes to the next, the next location where I need to change the value. So I can just type in whatever the length is. So in this case, I'll type in the number 12, or I could get um, anything that would generate an integer at this point I could I could do uh, could use here and then when I'm finished I'll hit the enter key on my keyboard to move inside of the curly braces to the first line of code where I can begin uh, typing the code that I want to uh, uh, that I want to create so in this case uh, console uh, right line uh, my value and then obviously we'll get the expectation what we expect here let's just go ahead and continue I'll get rid of the breakpoint okay so after it found seven it went ahead and re it uh, iterated from 0 to 11 and then exited out great okay so in this lesson we learned first of all how to use the for statement to iterate through a code block a number of times until a particular set of criteria are satisfied and we demonstrated a simple condition in our code examples but we can expand on this and we will expand on this in future lessons we also learned how to combine an if statement inside of the for iteration statement to add some logic to evaluate certain conditions and then we learned how to use the break keyword in order to jump out of a code block uh, jump out of the for iteration code block uh, we also learned uh, the use of some uh, several built-in debugging features in the IDE, like the ability to pin down the little uh, variable so that we can watch it as we as we continue debugging within our code. Uh, the use of the color of the fonts to indicate something just changed. We also learned how to use a code snippet to save keystrokes and to write code more precisely. So that's great. So we're doing awesome. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.